Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Diachronic. You're also here on this Destiny 2 video, and today we're going to be taking a look at my top 10 least favorite exotics in Destiny 2. So huge and very important disclaimer, this video is mostly just for fun. Obviously there are a lot of bad exotics in Destiny 2, and we're just going to be having fun with this list. Don't get offended by the things that I've chosen, it's mostly just for fun. But I will still be making a lot of good points about certain exotics and how they're used. Because if there is no use case for an exotic, it is useless. Right, so I got places to be, so let's go ahead and get started. By the way, I have a live stream going on around 3 p.m. today, so come check that out. Coming up at number one on this top 10 list, we have the Aeon series of exotics. Aeon Safe, Swift, and Soul 1 for each of the different classes, where you get better ability regeneration when in proximity of someone with Aeon, and you get bigger bonuses if you also have Aeon on as well. Here's the thing. Those bonuses, pretty mediocre, and forcing your entire team to pick one specific exotic just for maybe faster grenades, faster dodge, or faster melee, that's so worthless. There's never a time in a raid where we're like, hey, I really need to have more dodges. No, nobody ever says that. You need Celestial Nighthawk, you need Raiden Flux, Orpheus Riggs, you want heal faster with Worm Husk. Man, I mean, I just listed a, a bunch of hunter options, but like, really, the in raids and in nightfalls, you need so many other exotics. Having even an entire team with this exotic is not worth it. Honestly, they really need to take another look at exotics like this, because I, I like the idea of it. Making it so you have this very specific type of build for your entire team, and you work together and stay together, but the bonus needs to be insane. Coming up at number two, we have the exotic sky rifle known as Skyburner's Oath. First thing there, I said scout rifle. That should tell you right away that nobody really uses it. Because here's the thing, scout rifles have a lot of range, but they have less DPS than things that have have less range and generally pulse rifles are the maximum range you're ever going to need outside of a couple other really well performing sniper rifles that we use these days including a Zanagi. Here's what's special about Skyburner's Oath. You can blind fire, it increases the fire rate of the weapon and it also auto tracks to targets which is kind of fun but the really slow reload speed really tanks the experience and again poor DPS. What's the point? You might as well just be using a sidearm at that point. Up at number three, we have the Oath Keepers, an exotic gauntlet for the hunters that allow you to ho fully hold back your bow's draw for an infinite amount of time, where normally you can only hold it back for around five seconds before your guy gets tired and releases it forward. Now here's the thing. Three seconds in, you drop the draw, and then you redraw. Half a second later, you're fully drawn again. The main use of this exotic is to take advantage of fully drawn perks from certain exotic bows. For example, we have the Wish Ender being able to see through walls. That stays around forever instead of just blinking once. Trinity Ghoul bonus also works with this. Le Monarch Poison stays around for a long time. So that is the reason why you'd use this exotic. But fully drawing back your bow, you can just time the full drawback without this exotic and then use Celestia. Nighthawk instead. In my opinion, they should change it to include a skill-based option. Like, for example, full court with grenade launchers. Make it so maybe if you're farther away with a bow shot, then you get more damage. But obviously that would be hard to balance in PvP. But, you know, something interesting like that. Something that I might use. But even then, if it was double damage at like 50 meters, I still probably wouldn't really use a bow. Coming up at number four, yet another exotic scout rifle, we have the Polaris Lance. Which is a great example of an exotic weapon that really just looks like a legendary weapon. It has Dragonfly and an explosive shot every fifth shot. And on top of that, I think it also has like triple tap or something. It's a legendary weapon with slightly better exotic style stats. And again, a scout rifle, not that great these days. Up next after that, at number five, we have an exotic bow known as Wish Ender. Again, one of those keywords, bow. Not really the meta these days, really high range, but really poor DPS. And the special perk of this sounds interesting. It could honestly be complete trash or completely game-breaking. The ability to see enemies through walls once you fully draw back your bow. The problem is you have to use it with the bow because you can see the enemies through walls, then switch weapons. It's, it's not enough. It's too much time time to actually take advantage of it, it's one of those weird ones. You could definitely see a really good PvP god take huge advantage of something like this, but it's a lot of work to do something that you could just have a special weapon with. Coming up at number 6 in this top 10 countdown is another scout rifle, scout rifle, scout rifle known as Jade Rabbit. Probably the worst proponent of the things I've been talking about. It has basically all legendary perks. It has Head Seeker, where every body shot increases the headshot damage, and it does not change the number of shots it takes to kill people in the game, period. 
and it also has triple taps so you get ammo back in the magazine as you get headshots. It's honestly, it, it, the only advantage it has is that it's an exotic weapon, meaning that it has ex exotic style stats. If you didn't know, all exotic weapons have better total stats than regular weapons, but it's, again, it's a 150 scat rifle. How often are you gonna need that? You might as well just be using a sniper rifle. Coming up at number seven in this top 10 countdown, we have the Eternal Warrior, what I consider to be the poster boy of making fun of exotics. Now, I will say it is better than I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was just gonna be like one extra headshot while you're super. It's actually four extra headshots. It takes nine headshots from a 150 hand cannon to kill a super uh, from the Juggernaut or the Earthshaker with his exotic on. Now, that being said, it doesn't really change the number of kills you're gonna get in a match, which is why you would use a certain exotic. So it technically, yes, makes it more consistent that you're gonna be getting those two kills a super, but it doesn't change the number of potential kills you're getting a super. And with skilled gameplay and proper timing, this is an exotic that really will just be outdated for you. And I made the same reasoning for the Gwinson Vest in my last top 10 Hunter Exotics video. The Gwinson Vest only increases the number of kills you get by around one to two a match. Whereas some other exotic will probably get you a lot more and improve your general gun gameplay. And that's the problem. Eternal Warrior, yes, you can swap it out right when you're about to use your super, get a slight advantage in your favor, but that's a lot of work and I just don't really like it. It's ugly too, ugh, it's ugly. Coming up at number eight in this top 10, we have the Severance Enclosure. Any charged melee or finisher will cause an explosion around you with a cooldown of around three to five seconds. You can't even trigger this consistently, which is something that I tried to do. On top of that, the higher level enemy that you use your finisher on for that explosion causes a higher damage, bigger explosion effect. Now here's the thing, that large explosion is really not that large. Even if it was like a 15 meter radius, killing like every basic ad in the room when you hit a boss yellow health named enemy it really again there's no use case for it as you get him to the higher level of gameplay master grandmaster nightfall that explosion does a small percentage of health to enemies around you and again it's very dangerous to get up and having to punch enemies not an in-game exotic and no particular use case Coming up at number nine, for a lot of similar reasons to the seventh and closer, we have the Bombardiers. Probably the best part about it is the name. Bombardiers, fun to say. This is a hunter exotic where whenever you dodge, it leaves behind a delayed explosion. That explosion does a decent amount of damage in PvP. I think like 100 to 150 damage. But I like to think of it more like a martyrdom from Call of Duty because usually you die for it and it does take a decent amount of time to go off and usually people just walk away by that point. That is unless you're using Danger Close, which is not a thing in this game. And lastly, probably the most disappointing exotic in this whole list, and this is not ordered in any particular way, but it happens to be the most disappointing, we have the Sanguine Alchemy. Now this exotic actually got completely changed when they last nerfed the One-Eyed Mask. It used to be low-key overpowered. It used to be the one-eyed mask for warlocks, where you stand in your rifts and you were able to see enemies through walls. And I forget exactly how it works, but you could see enemies through walls from your rifts. And your teammates could too. It was strong. But when they nerfed the one-eyed mask, they also had to take this exotic with it because it would have just become the new one-eyed mask. What they changed it to is that any kills you make in your rift delays the timer on that rift. So if you're in a healing rift, it just says, hey, for the next 10 seconds, the timer just stops. And I know what you're thinking, oh, the best use case for this could be when you're using your Well of Radiance to make that last longer. For whatever reason, you'd want to make it last longer, which is usually never. It doesn't work for the Well. It does not work for the Well of Radiance. When would I want to use this? Why, why not have the Stag or the Vespers of Radius or something else that'll make my, my Rifts come back faster? How long am I going to be standing in one spot that I need to have this? I could also be using Attunement of Grace where if her teammate's in that Rift, I get the full Rift back before the Rift completes. What? is the point. And that is going to be pretty much the end of the video. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought of these exotics. Let me know what your least favorite exotics are and don't pick the ones that you hate to fight against or hate to see like Thorn or Truth. You hate fighting. Pick the exotics that you think are actually bad. And of course, give me reasons why and compare it to the ones that I've given you today. In case you're wondering, the next top 10 is probably going to be PvE primaries. It's usually a big one. So stay tuned for that for next weekend. I'll try to work hard and get that done. Uh, but that's going to be a big one. So pray for me is what I'm trying to say. But yeah, anyways, that's the end of the video. Hope you guys did enjoy. My name is Anacronic, and I'll see you guys on the next one.